Hello, my name's Sharon Robinson and I'm an Associate Professor at the University of Wollongong. Today we're in the Botanical Gardens next door to the University and I'm going to talk to you about plant pollination. We know that plants use a variety of different ways of attracting pollinators. So one of the cues is colours, like red flowers, purple flowers that we have here. They can also use ultraviolet cues and they can use nectar and sweet scents to attract pollinators to move their pollen from one plant to a plant of the same species. But today I'm going to tell you about a particular group of plants that use heating to attract pollinators and they're over here. Using heat to attract pollinators involves a process called thermogenesis which literally means generating heat. And there are three examples that I'm going to talk about today that use this process, the first of which is philodendron, and here's a particularly fine example behind me in the botanical gardens. But to see how these plants use heat to attract pollinators, we have to get inside and take a closer look at these hot plants. This is a philodendron inflorescence consisting of a spathe and a spadix. The spadix contains hundreds of flowers called florets. At the base there are female florets. In the middle there's a region of sterile male florets and at the top there are the fertile male florets that produce the pollen. So now let's go out into the field and see them heating at night. Okay, this is a philodendron flower in the dark. It's about 8.30 at night and it's opened up and it's heating up to its full potential and the white part at the base where the sterile male florets are is at 42 degrees and this yellow part coming up here is where all the fertile male florets are and they're, um, they're probably at about 37 or 38 degrees. Here is the captured image which shows one, the fertile males at 38 degrees, two, the sterile males at 41.1 degrees, and three, the females at 21.6. This graph shows how two thermoregulatory species maintain constant temperature regardless of environmental temperatures. Sacred lotus stays above 30 degrees and philodendron above 40 degrees over a broad range of environmental air temperatures. Here is a time lapse taken over 18 hours of two philodendron spadices cut from the plant. It shows that they can still maintain a constant temperature above ambient. In the sequence, the air temperature changes from a cool purple during the night to a warm orange during the day, but the spadices remain white to orange, showing they're maintaining a constant temperature through this time. Here is the flowering sequence of philodendron with the first image showing a spathe about to open. On the morning of the peak heat event the spathe opens revealing the spadix which is heating up to 5 degrees centigrade above air temperature. That evening the flower is fully open revealing the female florets at the base of the spadix. The spadix pokes out of the spathe and its temperature climbs to 42 degrees centigrade. A strong fruity scent attracts beetles to the receptive female flowers. By dawn the next day, the spadix temperature drops and the spathe closes off at the base because the female flowers are no longer receptive. Over that day, temperatures rise to 30 degrees centigrade and remain high until the pollen is shed from the fertile male flowers late that afternoon. After this, heating stops and the spathe closes. This temperature trace shows the philodendron, in red, maintaining temperatures above air, blue, across a two-day cycle, including the 42 degree centigrade peak and the dip. Philodendron is a thermoregulating plant species belonging to the arum lilies, a family of plants with many heat producers. Colocasia esculenta is another arum species that grows in Australia. Here is one of my students, Julia, who is studying heating in Colocasia. We join her before dawn in a local creek. Similar to many other species of eraceae plants, it has been found that thermogenic activity occurs in Colocasia esculenta. 
Each spadex consists of a female part, a sterile region, a fertile male part, and an appendix. This is an inflorescence in the male stage of heating. During the night of the male phase, the fertile male sections of the spadex heat. In the early morning of the male phase, the lower part of the spathe becomes tight and closes the space between male and female portions. This helps prevent self-pollination of the inflorescence when the pollen is released. So here we're measuring the temperature of the colocasia and the um, fertile males are at 25 and the rest of the spathe is at about 20 degrees and the air temperature is about 19. After the heating burst, the fertile male florets, shown here, shed their pollen, thus completing pollination in colocasia. Another plant that heats its flowers is Nelumbo nocifera, or the sacred lotus, shown here in the Adelaide Botanical Gardens. Sacred lotus has a very different flower shape to the arum lilies. In this developmental sequence, stage zero shows a small pre-thermogenic bud. Heating starts in stage one, but the bud remains closed. By stage two, the female parts of the flowers are receptive and the flower opens to allow insects to visit the plant. In stage three, the stamens release the pollen and you can see that the petals and the stamens have fallen away from the yellow receptacle in the center. Heating stops after the pollen has been shed and the petals and the stamens are shed from the receptacle. The receptacle turns green and photosynthesizes and becomes the seed bearing structure. So I'm just measuring the temperature of the sacred lotus flowers. This is um, pre-thermogenic so it's too early for it to be actually heating and this is the stage here where we have the peak heating and the yellow receptacle in the middle heats up to 32 degrees so I've just measured the temperature of this one and it's around 32 degrees and when they're at their maximum they can get up to about 34 or 36. We already knew that the receptacle heats but in this experiment we were investigating how much heat the stamens and petals produce. To test this we used the thermal camera and removed part of the receptacle and also looked at heating in the individual organs after removal from the flower. From this we can tell that the receptacle and petals produce 90% of the heat and the stamens 10%. We think the petals and stamens heat to lure insects deep into the flower so that they get covered in pollen. Heating in plants is a fascinating topic of research. Our group is studying how plants produce heat and how they regulate the temperature in their flowers. They do this at the cellular level with none of the complicated structures that mammals have for heat regulation. So there we've had a quick tour of three thermogenic plants. So hopefully next time you think about pollination, you won't just think about colours or scents or nectar as rewards for pollinators. You'll think about heat as one of the other ways in which plants can encourage insects to visit their flowers and to move their pollen.